Hello, I'm Devin Stevenson, President of Northwest Florida State College, and I'm joined today by Dr. Nate Slayton, Vice President for Student Success. Welcome to this edition of Northwest Florida State College Outlook. Welcome to Northwest Florida State College Outlook. Our mission is our students, helping each person who comes through our doors to achieve their individual goals for education and career attainment. NWF is committed to providing students with the opportunity to meet their educational goals and help them achieve success. We join you from Raider Central and we are very excited to show you this reimagined Student Success Center. Last February, in an official ceremony, we broke down the walls to encourage student success, both figuratively and literally. For our college, this year is all about making a significant impact, including more emphasis on creating clear, unobstructed pathways towards student success. We've been working on transformational changes to improve the quality of place and the quality of life at Northwest Florida State College and within our communities. So we reimagined, we remodeled what was formerly known as Enrollment Hall to bring you this wonderful Student Success Center now known as Raider Central. Behind these doors, you'll see a modern concept whereby students receive all services in one location. There are no more runarounds, no chasing services, no search and seize modes for our students. We deliberately disrupted the old way and we removed the barriers and created a venue for the active engagement of our students. We recently held a tour in this great space and today we're gonna to give you that same tour. Nate, tell us what we're gonna to see today. Dr. Stevenson, the Student Success Division has been working extremely hard to create efficiencies and streamline the process for those who want to apply. We want to help students navigate the process and make it as easy as possible for them to start and continue at Northwest Florida State College. Our vision is to make the admissions process simpler for students by centralizing all of our customer service. We also want to provide students one office to complete the enrollment process and to expedite enrollment by ensuring that students will be able to complete the entire process in under one hour. We're also hoping to reduce our wait times and also work side by side with students to solve their problems by eliminating all of the walk-up windows that we used to have. We're also hoping to improve speed and accuracy by consolidating all of our back office processes together. Um, we also want to improve our measures with a keen eye on completion and retention of our students. We'll spend more time reaching out to students to proactively meet their needs. And now the teaching and learning division is across the hall from us so students won't have to walk across campus right. to address academic needs. So are you ready to go on a walking tour and see just how easy it is to apply at Northwest Florida State College? Yes, I am. Wonderful. Dr. Stevenson, which program do you think you want to apply to? Well, you know, my wife is a really good cook, but I've always wanted to learn to, to do it, you know, like the chefs do it. So I'm thinking that our new culinary arts program might be good. You know, it's one of our newest programs and certainly benefits the tourists, the locals, and the businesses of the Emerald Coast. Great. Let's go. All right. So when you come into Raider Central, a concierge service greets you and determines how to serve you as fast as possible. Hi, so I'm Heather, Hello. one of the student success navigators here at the college. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yes. How may I help you today? Well, I'd like to enroll in culinary arts. Wonderful. Let's head over to one of our computers. All right. Get you set up right here. So our online application is super quick, it's easy, and it's free. The first step is for you to create an online account. So jump on, uh, follow the prompts as you go through the application, and I'll be right here to answer any questions you may have along the way. All right. You submitted the application? Yes, I have. Oh, wow, that was fast. I know, I'm good. Yeah, well, let's head over and meet Dorian, one of our other student success navigators, and she'll help you with the next steps. Great, thank you. Hi, 
Hi, Dorian. I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Stevenson. Hi. Hello. Welcome to Northwest Forest State College. Thank you. Nice Thank to you. meet you. Please have a seat. Sure. He's our newest applicant to the Associate of Science in Culinary Management. Wonderful. Thank you. Sure. So welcome to Northwest Florida State College. Thank you. Um, together we will explore your degree plan and the various pathways to success. Excellent. Okay, sir, so what I would recommend is that maybe you take the HFT 1000 course coming up mm -hmm. in the spring, and that's a good follow-on to the FSS course. Okay, so you're actually helping me now by prescribing my next steps. Yes, yes, and the nice thing about Northwest Florida State College is we empower you to register yourself for classes online. Wonderful. Yep, so I will give you your student ID number as well as your username, and you can access that through RaiderNet. Excellent. Yep. Wonderful. And your student ID with your username as well as the recommended classes. Thank you, Dorian. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day. So Dr. Stevenson, now the students can register for classes and if they have any questions, they can use these computers in the lobby or they could use our new online chat feature. Who knows, you could even be chatting with Dorian. We made all of these changes so that we're doing the legwork instead of the student running all over campus. We want everyone to have the tools they need to be successful. Thanks Dr. Slayton. Each of you has joined us to see for yourselves the streamlined and efficient approach that we now employ. We know that we won't be perfect in all we do, but if we chase perfection, we surely will catch excellence. Every day at Northwest Florida, we work to create a better experience for our students, one that is focused on moving them towards success, observing our students succeed, and seeing the expressions of that success on their faces makes our job worthwhile. It is that fuel that drives me to diligently pursue excellence for them and for this college. And we thank you for watching Northwest Florida State College Outlook. Now in the next segment of our Northwest Florida State College Outlook, we're gonna find out what these students are doing here in Boggy Bayou. Welcome back to the second segment of Northwest Florida State College Outlook. And today we're in beautiful Valparaiso, Florida. And we certainly want to thank the citizens of Valparaiso as well as the mayor and the city council for allowing us to be here and filming today in this wonderful park. Today I have as my guest, Allison McDowell, the director of the Choctaw Hatchie Basin Alliance, better known as CBA. Allison, we're very glad to have you on the program. Well, thanks for having us, and we're um, really excited that you're here at our outdoor classroom here on beautiful Boggy Bayou. Isn't it beautiful? And we've got these students here working today. This is an exciting time for us. You know, I, I don't think a lot of people know uh, necessarily about Choctaw Hatchie Basin Alliance and the CBA and the wonderful work they do. You're a nonprofit organization. You're into monitoring, education, research, and restoration. You do a lot for the environment here, and we're certainly grateful that our college can be, be a part of that. Well, we're grateful that we have uh, the college to depend on for that. We concentrate mostly on our local waterways, and we are our, the, our waterways are the heart of our economy and our local identity, so it's very important that we all learn to take care of them for future generations. That's great. And just to give you as a reference point, we're looking here uh, right to the Mid-Bay Bridge that opens up into the Choctaw Hatchie Bay. Uh, so you call, you said something about the wind being a fetch. What can you tell me about that real quick? So the distance that wind travels over water and picks up speed as it travels over water and creates waves is the distance is called the fetch. So this is a very long fetch because you can see it goes almost out directly out to the pass from here. And what's interesting is just right here along the shoreline, you all are already doing um, sort of uh, buffering up the shoreline to avoid erosion 
And that's what our students are really working on today with your grasses and your uh, limestone and oysters, right? That's correct. So the students are part of our education program area, and but uh, folded within that education program area is a lot of restoration and monitoring as well. So these guys, this is a perfect spot for that. There's a lot of erosion here because of the, the fetch that comes through. So the natural way to um, help prevent uh, erosion is to have a salt marsh and a breakwater. And we call those, item, those um, components together a living shoreline. So the students have helped to build that. One of the best things that I think you do, um, I've been here with the college working with you and CBA and supporting the work, of course, that you do has been the educational component because we know that knowledge brings understanding which brings action. Uh, could you talk to us just a little bit about the educational programs that you do with the middle schools and the high schools? So we have an extensive K-12 through education program. We have Grasses and Classes which is our, our elementary school program and we are in over 20 schools in Oklahoma and Walton County and our Amer we train an AmeriCorps team that goes in and actually teaches the kids and in that, that program, as well as our Dunes and Schools program, which is for middle school, and our high school program, which is called SPAD ON, um, we bring in monthly lessons, and we have hands-on scientific activities and combine those with field experiences. So what you're seeing today is one of the field experiences. So there's a lot of activity going on here. I know the camera is getting some of, the, some of the things that are going on here with these students, but I think it is so important that their understanding about the environment and how that they, as another generation, must protect that environment. Tell us exactly what they're doing here today. So these students have actually built their own oyster reef breakwater. They're building their own living shoreline. So later, uh, after the oyster reef breakwater stabilizes, they'll build salt marsh behind that by planting some plants, so, um, some native vegetation. But right now what they're learning to do is our restoration coordinator, uh, Rachel, is teaching them to monitor this site to see if it's successful. So is it creating more habitat, which is our intention, and, and is it actually slowing down erosion, which is what we're intending. So they're learning to be real scientists from a real scientist. I gotcha. So that, that begs the next question, and that is a lot of people read about, they watch videos about environmental protection and environmental sustainability, but what advantage do you believe that actually having the students do this hands-on piece this uh, tactical piece, this kinesthetic piece, what advantage is that to us? Well, there's a lot of advantages. Some is to the students themselves. Uh, a lot of kids need that learning style. They need to be able to um, take in uh, an activity with all of their senses. So they're out here in the environment and they're connecting to the environment. And once they make that connection, they learn to love the environment and, and we teach them how to take care of the environment. And they want to take care of the environment and hopefully as they grow up, they'll continue to make really good uh, decisions that will lead to a sustainable waterways. That's, that, that is excellent. So what do you think are the real values of the educational component of CBA? Well, we believe in capturing hearts and minds of students while they're young. We think that if we can again get them to to connect to the environment to love the environment that they will in turn teach their parents when they go home and say hey you know maybe we should pick up that straw over there or, or refuse a straw when we go to a restaurant right. you know they learn little things like that but even more so as they grow older they they begin to they have that ingrained where they make those decisions to do things that are better for the environment well i will say that i think your work is is noticeable you know my wife and I have lived here for two years in Niceville, so we, we see the water almost every day. Uh, we very seldom see any trash, uh, any litter. It's, it's almost pristine. And I, I would have to say, I think, a lot of that work is, and a lot of that mindset comes from the work you've been doing now. I don't know how many years CBA has been, been active, but you've touched a lot, thousands and thousands of people that fully understand now and embrace and demonstrate that they do want to protect this beautiful paradise uh, at, in which we live. So I hear you talk about a living shoreline and you've described to me as we've been out here today recording this program, the different types of shorelines as such. All of them have, have their own place and all of them are living in some way as you described it, but I'd like for you to tell our television audience what, what is really a living shoreline? What, what is that? So a living shoreline is an alternative to a hardened engineered shoreline such as a riprap or seawall. Right. And it really mimics a natural shoreline. 
and it adds a breakwater component. Usually the breakwater will be an oyster reef, and so we'll put down um, oyster shell or lime rock, natural marine limestone, and oysters will settle on that, so it'll become a living breakwater. That'll be slightly offshore. That's, part, that's one component of the living shoreline. And then we'll have um, grasses planted behind that, native salt marsh grasses, and so that's another uh, component of a living shoreline. And the advantage that that has over um, a hardened shoreline is that it can move and roll as, as sea level rises, as it may. And it will also um, create habitat for native critters that a seawall or a riprap does not. So it, it even gives the, uh, the natural habitat, it, it's, it's almost like replacing in a natural way. It's, uh, it's not some false pseudo a uh, fake type exactly. of environment. Exactly. You It'd still be... have that nice intertidal habitat. There it's so go. that we, all the juvenile critters can kind of hide out in there, and, and then birds will come along and feed in there. And it's, it's so it's it's really mimicking the natural environment. So a, as we look out beyond Boggy Bayou here to uh, the Choctahatchee Bay, how do you believe that the work of CBA and the Alliance has certainly improved the Choctahatchee Bay for all of us that live here and our tourists that visit here? Well, as, you, as uh, I said before, it's, we are, our waterways, I mean, try to imagine our area without our waterways, our identity as, um, you know, people that live on Boggy Bayou or people that live in Dustin or people that live on Chattahoochee River. I mean, you think about those and you get a mental picture of what it looks like. That's our, that's our local identity. And people come down here to spend time along the beautiful shoreline, along the beautiful water. If we didn't have that, if that was somehow destroyed through our own carelessness, then think about how different our way of life would be. So Absolutely. that's really important. Um, you know, I think that we perform an uh, important service for the community and we're always trying to gather new people into our community of water stewards oh, yeah. so that we can all help take care of them. That's great. So how do you think the work of CBA uh, and, and we certainly love the work of CBA and, and the institution, Northwest Florida State College, is the fiscal agent for the grants and the things that, that CBA does to live and to thrive. But how do you think that the work of CBA really benefits the institution? Uh, because it is the most different, the most special partnership uh, that I've been a part of in my career as a college president. Well, we, um, we are ambassadors for Northwest Florida State College. As I mentioned before, just taking our education program, for example, um, we reach children in uh, elementary, middle school, and high school. They will see scientists and teachers from CBA and AmeriCorps coming to their classroom. Sometimes if they go to school here through their, uh, throughout their school career, they'll see us three different times in three different programs. We're, we're just now getting to where we've had them so long that we have legacy kids. And we, uh, so we're connecting them not only with the environment, but with Northwest Forest State College. That's excellent. So now let's transcend the college and the actual nonprofit and talk about your work in really improving the life of, uh, of individuals here. And what I like to say, improving the quality of place for this area. So how, how do you think, based on your leadership role and, and working with our communities, how you benefit our local communities? Well, um, our waterways are the heart of our, a lot of our jobs would not exist. You may not think your job is directly tied to our waterways, but it, it is. We have a report, um, you know, we have some scientific reports sure. from economists that will, that uh, point to that in that direction. So it's not, in, not only for economic reasons, but for aesthetic and quality of life reasons. You know, people enjoy being on the water. They make their memories along the water. They barbecue at these public parks and right. they, they like run off in our, exactly, right? At a park like this, there's these wonderful facilities um, that people enjoy along the water and there's a reason that they're placed on the water. I grew up here, I was born in Fort Walton. I enjoyed these waterways my entire life and I wanna make sure that my grandkids and your grandkids can enjoy these waterways as well. That's great. So earlier today in the program, you mentioned the word stewards. Yes. Uh, becoming accountable for. Yes. So for the people that are watching it, and believe me, locals certainly watch this television program, but not just locals. During the tourist season, uh, as you well know, thousands and thousands of people see this program in their condos, in their beach homes, whatever. And how can we encourage both our locals and our tourists to be responsible 
to help us improve the swimmable and fishable waterway that we see right here, as well as others in Northwest Florida. What, what can we do to, to raise that um, urgency of, of the need for them to be better stewards? Well, I think um, out education and outreach can really help get at the urgency and the need for the problem. And some of the things that people can do that we teach them through these education and outreach um, uh, programs is, you know, pick up after yourself. If you go to the beach, don't leave your beach toys out. Some of the lar the biggest, we do a cleanups, coastal cleanups, and some of the biggest, um, you think, uh, trash item that we find is plastic toys that are all broken down into the environment. So people think maybe sometimes that if they leave their toys that someone else will pick them up and enjoy them and that's not necessarily the case. If you bring toys to the beach you need to, you take, you need them to take them back. So pack it in, pack it out, everything. Um, try to uh, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Those are the three R's from back in the olden days and I'd like to add... Say it again. Reduce. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Recycle. Uh, yes, especially when it comes to plastics. And I like to add refuse. So when you go to the restaurant, you can refuse a straw. You can Do not take that plastic skip straw. Skip the straw. <laughs> Please skip the straw. And so, and you can uh, bring your own reusable grocery bags. You can um, refuse a bottled water and bring your own uh, water container to refill. There's lots of things that people can do along those lines. Um, you can um, not use pesticides and fertilizers on your lawn, especially if you're close to water. But even if you're not close to water, a lot of that can run off of your property and into stormwater systems and then into uh, our local waterways and that can cause algae blooms. So that's something you could do at home is, is you know, reduce your use of pesticides and fertilizers. That's very good. So how can people that are watching this program today become involved with the work of the Choctaw Hatchie Basin Alliance, CBA. How can they become involved? Well, there's lots of ways to become involved. There's lots of volunteer events. You can become one of our um, oyster reef volunteers where you can come out and help us build reefs. You can um, donate to CBA through the College Foundation and help support some of our school programs. We need sponsors for all of our schools and for a lot of our monitoring stations as well. And those are tax deductible the, yes, donations as well. Yes, they are tax well. deductible through the foundation. That's right, charitable contributions. That's right. And we have a, a, a citizen scientist water quality monitoring program. So we'll train you to take water quality samples and, and you can go out and take them um, monthly there's uh, we have beach cleanups one in the fall and one in the spring that you can come and join us and help to clean up around our local beaches and um, there's uh, there's lots you can lots do of, lots yes, of things there's all kinds of stuff well, you, you know, can find out on our website lots that's more. exactly <laughs> where I was going so it's basinalliance.org yes. right basin alliance it's right there on your screen basinalliance.org Allison, thank you for being with us today. This is great work. I appreciate you getting the students out today. Uh, it's a beautiful day in Valparaiso, a beautiful day in Northwest Florida. It's a beautiful day on the water, and we certainly want to keep our waterways safe and clean. Well, that's a wrap up for our program. I want to thank Dr. Nate Slayton, our Vice President for Student Success, as well as Allison McDowell, the Director of the Choctaw Hatchie Basin Alliance, for being on the program today, for their great work we salute them for the wonderful way that they're improving life and improving the quality of place in Northwest Florida. Until next time, we'll see you on Northwest Florida State College Outlook. Thank you for watching Northwest Florida State College Outlook. Our mission is our students, helping each person who comes through our doors to achieve their individual goals for educational and career attainment. Improve your life today at Northwest Florida State College.